how cheaply can you put together a good setup for espresso at home? On a budget of say 250 pounds, can I go from complete scratch to something delicious at the end of it? This was the question I set out to answer and in this project I learned a ton along the way. The path did not run particularly smooth. But let me hand you back to past me who will explain how I approached this whole thing and what the game plan for doing this was. So how is this going to be possible? I've said you can't do espresso for this budget, but you can if you buy second hand. And that's the gamble that we're going to be taking today. Can I buy a second hand machine in good enough condition? Can I repair it, restore it if necessary? Can I get good coffee out of it? Can I do the same with a grinder? I don't know. So the plan is this. I'm going to go onto eBay. I'm going to start bidding for secondhand bits of equipment. I'm going to tell you in a second what my strategy is going to be about what kind of things I'm going to buy. A few other bits and pieces I'll probably just buy brand new because they're easy enough to get, but I'll be trying to hit that budget of £250, which is a good amount of money, but also not that much to go from nothing to great espresso. Let's start with the espresso machine. Now with a limited budget, shopping for second hand means I'm only going to shop for one model from one manufacturer. I'm going to go and try and find a Gaggia Classic, and there's a, a bunch of reasons I want to do that. Firstly, loads of people who don't really want espresso machines often end up buying Gaggia Classics. They're very available, they're in department stores, people buy them online. Loads of people have them and are likely to then probably put them up on eBay, so it's a very common machine. Secondly, it's relatively easy to modify in a couple of ways that improve its output. Uh, and third, there's loads of spare parts available, it's a, it's a well-known machine, it, it shouldn't be hard for me to fix something if it needs fixing. Now on eBay, it looks like if you search for a Gadget Classic, my budget's going to need to be around 100 to 130 pounds. Your mileage may vary a little bit, and, and obviously after this video goes up there might be a little bit of a surge in demand, but if you're patient you can probably find a bargain. But what about grinders? Grinders are much more difficult. Uh, finding a, a good cheap grinder is difficult to do. I had a, a, a tactic of really chasing two different models here. Firstly, I was looking for some Sage or Breville grinders. I think they make a very good espresso grinder at the lower end of pricing for good espresso grinders. I think it's about £200 for their espresso grinder. They do a couple of models, but either one do actually, I think, a very good job. Chances are there's a few of those for sale because, again, it's a very popular brand people tend to buy them and maybe upgrading through those. Uh, again, there's spare parts available, all that kind of stuff. The other grinder I've had my eye on is one that's maybe not as common everywhere in the world, but it's the Iberitel MC2. This is actually very cheap in the UK. You can pick these up for uh, under £150 sometimes, brand new. So super entry level in terms of good espresso grinder kind of pricing. And so that's the plan. I'm going to buy these two things, I hope, get them delivered here. Uh, and the next time you see me, I'm going to be unboxing what I bought. All right, first parcel is here. This is the Gaggia Classic. Now, I got lucky here. I paid £104.99 for this unit delivered, which feels like a total bargain. Uh, I was a bit worried, actually, going into this, that I would be constantly outbid, uh, and I was. They were going for like £150 quite often, but patience paid off. This is probably the 20th unit I bid on, and I got lucky. Or, or did I? We'll soon find out. Water filter. Oh dear. <laughs> now, that's not what you want the inside of your water filter to look like. So there's going to be some pretty heavy cleaning to come in this particular episode. Drip tray, very useful. So there's good news and bad news. We're we're missing a couple of bits. They're not essential. I could still make coffee on this. It would be a bit messy, but I, it could still be done. We're missing the the lid for the water tank up on top here, which you really would want to keep dust out. This is pretty dusty. It's going to need a good clean. Uh, we're missing the little accessory that goes on the side of this. Now I think they used to be called like Panarello ones. It's a sort of weird semi-auto milk foamer. The steam isn't a priority for me here. We're talking about espresso and espresso first and foremost, but if we can get a working steam wand, that'd be good news. And then the other piece that's missing is a little tube that sort of discharges from the solenoid valve. One of the things that the Gaggia Classic has that the others don't have is this three-way solenoid valve. It discharges any built-up pressure from inside the portafilter out into the drain box. If you don't have that, you can get what's called portafilter sneeze, where you take the portafilter out straight after brewing, and there's a release of pent-up pressure that goes kind of pleh. It's quite unpleasant. So one of the niceties of the Gaggia Classic is that it has that three-way valve on there. We just need the tube that runs from the valve into the drain box. Now what we're going to do to this is, is have a little look 
first in the, the group head here, uh, and then we'll have a little look inside too. Uh, and see what needs to be done. We're going to give it a simple descale. We're just going to use probably a five percent citric acid solution. So first thing, we're just going to take out. We're just going to take out the the group head block here. It's not a particularly difficult thing to do, hopefully. Um, just to see if it's clean. Uh, we're going to look for signs of scale in this thing or any other concerns. So he's cleaned it. That's good news. Uh, gasket looks to be in reasonably good condition as well. So. I'm actually kind of hopeful on this front. Let's get these top screws out. All right, inside, things aren't looking too bad, you know? In here, you can see the inside of these things are actually very simple. Um, you can see all your controls here, You've got your boiler down here. So one of the things that we can do with a gadget that's, that's quite desirable is that you can modify what's called the OPV or the overpressure valve. Now, the way that loads of these machines work is that they have a, a very loud pump inside them that's a vibration pump that will produce up to say 15 bars of pressure. What you can change is the spring inside here, inside the OPV, uh, and different spring strengths will open at different pressures, bleeding off the excess, allowing you to have your desired pressure. And you can buy a kit, and I have bought a kit um, for I think about 18 pounds that comes with several spring choices, so you can brew it six or nine bars if you want to, with a relatively simple change to this part here, which I'll do now. So this is my OPV kit. This is from Shades of Coffee, they're in the UK. Um, there's a little installation manual that comes with it that's online, it's very simple. Uh, essentially we're just going to change out a spring part inside here, that's kind of it. So there's a little tube we need to take off, and be a little bit resistant to it, but it will... Oh. Give up in a second. Hello. Oh, now we've definitely got some scale in here, which is interesting. You can see that on here, there's a very fine coating of scale. So a D scale is going to definitely be a good idea with this, but this is our existing spring. Now in this particular kit, this longer spring, it's the six and a half bar one. And all we're going to do is put it back inside. So our descaler is in the tank. 5% as I said, that's fairly aggressive, but I should need to descale just once and be done. Good, I just tested this and uh, the light doesn't work, which made me freak out. You can hear a clicking inside, so, you know. Now I see hot water, which is great news. So, so it's going to be difficult to temperature surf this without having the lights work, and I'll check the connections at the back here and see if there's some loose wiring, or if it's the, the sort of buttons themselves that have died. I'll try and work that out. So the path to cheap espresso does not run smoothly. Now, you left me just starting to become frustrated and not understand what was going on. There's been a few issues, but we fixed them all, so that's good, or well, most of them anyway. Firstly, uh, we found a loose connector inside the machine. It, it, it seemed like one of the connectors had literally broken off somewhere. Thank you to people on Twitter and also Aid from Shades of Coffee for a little guidance. That has now been fixed, so the lighting on the brew button, on the, on the coffee button works, so we know when we're at temperature, which is good news. Power button still doesn't light up, not sure why, but you can hear the thing come on. It's still, it's still workable. Then we had a little bit of a leak uh, on one of the hoses, so that needed to be fixed. It was a bit annoying. And then while I was inside, I discovered that while I had thought that all Gadget Classics have solenoid valves, this one doesn't. I don't know when the change happened. I used to sell these from sort of 2003 to 2005, and a solenoid valve was, was kind of standard. This one, in the chassis, you can see there's a hole. That little hole is where the pipe would go. The hole is there for it. There's a hole in the drip tray, but I, I, I complained about there being no tube on delivery. Uh, no, no, it, it turns out it doesn't need one, which I suppose is good news. It's one less part to buy, keeps me on budget. I think as far as we're gonna go here, this espresso machine, is ready to go. Let's move on to grinders. Oh, more parcels. Let's come to these little ones in a bit. Is that good traditional eBay packaging? Hopper. Never understood this color of hopper. Hello. Here we have it, an Iberatel MC2. Now, I will take the burrs out, have a little look at those in a second. It's a pretty simple grinder. Uh, and what a lot of people like about this, it's got a small set of conical burrs inside, that's no bad thing here. Certainly got the power to be grinding for espresso. It's a stepless grind adjuster on this side, which is uh, good. Oh, look at the little, this spins too, how exciting. Let's talk about the other boxes that I got, which are kind of part of this whole setup. I did need a set of scales. I figured a set of scales had to go into this setup, and so I spent £14.99 delivered for a digital set of coffee scales. The coffiness is that they have a timer as well as a scale function, so a two-in-one. So these should fit okay under a drip tray, hopefully. So £15, I think, 
well spent on our budget, I've decided to put in a, a basket into this setup. Now this I think is maybe a poor use of budget, but, but I think a sound investment. I think spending on a better basket, I really like VST baskets, but trying to be a bit more budget conscious, I've gone for a Pullman basket here, which uh, I spent 20 pounds on. Uh, a VST would be about 28 pounds. So not a huge saving, but, but you know, I thought I'd give it a go. This is a 17 to 19 gram basket because I don't think we're gonna be pushing massive doses around in this thing, and 58 mil. So another good reason for a gadget uh, is to have a 58 mil portafilter, so that's that. This I'm a bit nervous about because this makes no sense. I, I thought I need a tamper. Of course we need a tamper. We're not gonna use some plastic thing. We're gonna buy a tamper. And I went around on eBay and I found this and it was five pounds 95 delivered in the UK, which I don't understand because that was, would cost at least two pounds to ship. So that's, someone's made profit on this being four pounds. Now this looked like a proper tamper. It feels heavy. How is that 5.95? This feels like stainless steel. It's weighty, it's heavy. This is wood, five pounds 95. It's a little loose in the basket. It's not like a huge problem. It's not a perfect fit. It's not like a 58.3, it's a standard 58 mil, but we've got a tamper and we're on budget. Six pounds, you can't complain. So I'll get rid of these, put them to the side and I'll just have a little look inside of this thing and see what the state of play is. So hopper just seems to just come out pretty loose, it's not, in perfect condition, it's a bit cracked at the bottom, but that's not gonna stop it grinding coffee properly. Needs a little bit of love. Needs a wash. Interesting, it's not a terrible nick inside. It's, it's a pretty simple thing. You've got a kind of worm gear here on your grind adjuster, which lets it be stepless. So you can see you've got tons and tons of control over your finer coarser situation. And there's two reasons for wanting to take this burr set out. First reason is I wanna wash the burr set give it a really good clean. Uh, one, to remove any gross coffee oils, and two, it'll give me a better idea of how sharp it is. When a burr set's very dirty, you see this commercially, they act almost as if they're a little bit blunter, and giving them a good clean, stripping off any oils that are built upon them, can improve uh, their sort of uh, efficacy and, and the kind of grind quality from them. You've got a little plastic sweeper unit in here, and there's some, some grossness at the bottom of that. Uh, and having conquered the reverse threading on, on the nut on the top of this, it should be a relatively easy thing to get this clean. Once this is cleaned up and put back together, we'll do our sums and see how I've done on the budget front. Have I, you know, come in under budget, a little over budget? And when we taste the coffee, does it taste better than the money I spent? That's the, the question to ask here. Before that though, there's an ad, and because there's an ad, I think we should do a coffee giveaway. We used to do these quite often last year. We should do one now. I'll give away 15 bags of coffee. The link is down below. But now there's a quick ad from this video's sponsor, Morning Brew. I've been subscribed to Morning Brew for a few years now because I wake up in the morning and I don't wanna fight my way through social media and I don't wanna open up 200 different email newsletters just to find out what's going on in the world. I wanna open just one. And that's why I like Morning Brew so much. It's a free daily digest of everything that's going on in the world. It's well written, it's witty, it's engaging, it's fun, it's easy to read, uh, and I'm covered for the day. And sometimes it feels like it's reading my mind. Like today, I wanted a quick NFT refresher and there, in my email is a quick NFT refresher. And really, there's no reason not to sign up. It takes less than 15 seconds, so if you're interested in tech or business or finance or anything really, click the link in the description down below and subscribe to Morning Brew today. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. So here we are, we are at the end of this little journey and we have our espresso machine ready to roll. We have our grinder ready to go. I did add one more accessory I didn't talk about before. Very necessary, I've got a second-hand Sage knock box. You can probably get cheaper. This was £13.70 delivered uh, into the budget. Works perfectly fine in a domestic situation, so that's there. Now I do also have the Sage grinder that I bought over here. Now I, I bought this kind of by mistake. Uh, it's a bit above budget. I paid 135 It's cheaper than its full price of 230 I think. Uh, but we, we won't be pulling shots with this right now. We're going to pull shots with this thing. So the Iberitel MC2, it's a timed grinder. Your grind control knob here, it, it's stepless, which is a good thing, and it certainly goes very fine. I'm quite impressed by that. You can adjust the time, but it's a bit awkward. There's a screw on the front here. You have to put a flathead screwdriver in and twist it. There's no real feedback. Not great, but I paid about 100 pounds for this, so I'm not really gonna complain. Now I have dialed in, but I haven't tasted the shot yet. So let's pull a shot. Now this grinder is messy. 
Uh, I will say that for it. It, it, it clumps quite a lot. I, I didn't buy a distribution tool or, or a needle tool. I would probably buy a paper clip in the situation to declump this because it is pretty clumpy. So yeah, as you can see, some pretty big chunky clumps. That isn't ideal. I'm not gonna lie to you, that's, that's not ideal, but it is a kind of fixable problem. Now the Gadget does have a flaw in that it's really hard to get a scale underneath the drip tray. We could just pull out the drain box and I'm okay with doing that because I'm okay with making a mess. You may not be. And also know that if you do have a solenoid valve, the porter filter and the group head will both drip for a little while afterwards. Whoa. Looks good. Is this worth it? Is it worth the time to hunt for it? Is it worth gambling on the equipment? Is it worth the effort? Is it worth the stress? Is it worth the money? That's good espresso. That is good espresso. Like, uh, yes, it could be better. Yes, it's, you know, I could get the extraction up a little bit. Yes, I would like a little bit more temp control. Yes, yes, yes. But that's a good shot. That's tasty. It's sweet. It's complex. It's pretty well extracted. The question is, is it worth it? Would I recommend going through this process? If you are comfortable with the risk involved, then I would say, yeah, maybe go for it. Chances are secondhand equipment will have problems. You might not have something as extreme as having a leak inside the machine like we did, or, or having a broken connector to fix. And, and if you're not comfortable with that stuff, then honestly stay away, save your money. Buy something where you're gonna get support, a warranty, backup service, all of those things. They, they really matter when you're spending hundreds of pounds. But if you are comfortable getting inside an espresso machine, if you're careful and you know what you're doing, then yeah, I would say go for it. I would say on the grinder front that I paid about hundred pounds for this and I'm reasonably impressed for the money. Like I don't think I've seen a grinder this cheap do espresso as well as this does. I'm not saying it's a flawless grinder. It's definitely, you know, has some issues with distribution. It retains a lot of ground coffee inside of it. It's not particularly intuitive to use, but it is relatively capable when it comes to grinding for espresso. And that impresses me for the money. If I was between these two, I probably would spend a bit more. I'd probably break my budget to get something like this. This isn't bad at filter coffee grinding. It's conical burst set as, as is this, but it's a little bit smarter. It can do a little bit more. It's a little bit more intuitive. It's a little easier to use. Uh, I, I would probably pick this for the money, 135 pounds, over this. Now, before we wrap up, we should say, did I hit my budget? Did I hit my 250 pound budget? And if you're paying attention, you would know that I did not hit my budget. To do all of this, I went 22 pounds over budget, which is about the price of the, the basket that I put in the gadget. But I would say, along with the springs mod, uh, the, the basket mod, I would say is essential absolutely essential to improving the quality of your espresso. So I regret, I regret nothing from that perspective. Yeah, I could have just not bought a knock box and just knocked it out into uh, my food waste or something like that. That'd be pretty easy to do. But, but having a knock box is a nice thing. I don't regret spending over my budget, but I spent 272 pounds-ish to get here. Uh, and I can't think honestly, of a better way to spend 272 pounds to get great espresso at home. We're kind of nailing the fundamentals. We're grinding fine enough into a, a good basket that does good even extraction, right temperature, right pressure. Spending more money would give me more control, more consistency, and yeah, a little bit of an improvement, but primarily it's about the control and consistency. Now, I don't get to keep these. I'll be giving them away to my Patreon supporters. They're the ones that give me a budget and the support to make these videos, to go and just buy this stuff, experiment, learn, and, and have some fun along the way. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you're tempted to do a little research. There's some links down below to some of the things that I bought, some eBay searches and that kind of stuff. But now I wanna hear from you down in the comments below. What machine should I have looked at, tried to buy on eBay? What grinder did I overlook? I'd love to hear your feedback down in the comments below. Have you bought secondhand? Did you have a good time? Did you have a bad time? Let me know. I wanna hear from you, share your experience with all of us. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.